Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on what promises to be a very exciting episode today. We've got lots to cover, so let's get straight into it. On the program today, we have Abi and Amelie from Cisco Meraki. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? We're doing well. How are you? I am also doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, we are going to talk about security today. Yes. And so before we get into the detail of what we want to cover, let's take a step back, a metaphorical step back, and <laughs> talk about the security landscape. Sure, Simon. As you know, modern IT is incredibly challenging. There's multiple dashboards, too many vendors. Threats keep evolving, but solutions don't. Yeah, exactly. And by any chance, have you read the 2019 Cisco Cybersecurity Report? It's a great question. I'll be honest, I've skimmed it, but maybe we should do a quick recap. Okay. I wanted to highlight one thing. Um, it stated that 84% of businesses do not have enough funds to uh, afford a full security solution. So they can only afford a snippet of a full solution. Wow, that's, yeah. that's significant. So anything we can do to help there has got to be important, right? Sure. Yes. On top of that, even those that have the budgets to afford that entire suite of security solutions mm -hmm. don't really have the security professionals they need to deploy these solutions. There's an acute shortage of security personnel. Right, and it's complex, and it's a it's a ever changing world that we need to be able to keep on top of. So obviously, we want to try and help with that. How are we going to do that? What's the main thing we're going to start off with today? Sure, and um, if you Simon, you of all people know that at Meraki we listen to our customers, mm. and we do that through various different ways. We get feedback from like Twitter, emails, and lots of different ways. But the one thing that is really close to our heart, do you want to say it? The Make-A-Wish box? Absolutely. The one that, that sits in the dashboard, right? Precisely. Okay. And, and we've been listening. So we get a lot of feedback from the customers about the dashboard and the things they'd like to see in the dashboard. And one of the things that they've been asking us is for a simple way to implement security across their network. And that's why we're here today. All right. So I can see this beautiful looking device in front of us, Abi. Tell us what this is. Sure, Simon. This is the MS390, the most powerful access switch we've ever built. And we're combining the signature Cisco Meraki simplicity with the power of Cisco switching innovations. That sounds awesome. Tell us about some of the hardware features that we want to really draw attention to here. Sure. So this switch comes with PoE, UPoE support so that you can power more access points and more Meraki smart cameras if you choose to. Mm -hmm. Additionally, it also comes with modular uplink ports. And if you realize, this is the first switch with Cisco Meraki that has modular uplink ports. Right, so now I can decide what kind of uplink and just adapt based on my growth as a business. Absolutely. Additionally, on the back here, if you look at it, we also have the options to have stack power and improved physical stacking. Okay, so stack power, I think, is going to be new for quite a few people. Abi, tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Stack power essentially serves two functions. And one of it is to act as a secondary power source, right? And the other thing is to give you the ability to pool power resources from all of your switches in a stack, which allows you to power more PoE devices. And additionally, this helps you save cost because you now have more PoE budget mm -hmm. with just the same number of devices. So that's a really nice step forward. It's obviously going to improve the confidence of the IT team, right? They keep their switches up and running even if they have a, an issue with power. So Absolutely. Right. And improved physical stacking essentially allows for faster stack convergence in case of a failover, which is incredibly critical in large IT deployments. Okay, wow, this is a really impressive looking box. And so uh, Abby's done a great job of covering what, what is basically we can see on the outside of it, but there's also some exciting stuff happening inside here. Tell exactly. us more about what we can do with that, Emily. Yes, and so because we have the Cisco Silicon built into the MS390, it allows us to build powerful features on top of the switch. And one of those features is adaptive policy. Mm -hmm. Do you know much about adaptive policy? I mean, I've heard the name, but I definitely need a recap for sure. Yeah, so uh, adaptive policy allows our customers to deploy consistent, rich policies across the entire network. Mm -hmm. That's completely IP agnostic. It's a big game changer. Right, so how does that change the reality for IT teams? Yeah, so for IT teams, uh, instead of dealing with IP addresses and not knowing the sources and destinations off the top of your head, mm -hmm. now we're dealing with simple language that allows us to characterize certain things. So everything is done based on the intent of the user, right. the devices, and the applications within our network. So for example, let's take the sales team. The sales team isn't allowed to access um, a POS system, for example. Mm -hmm. So that would be an easy access policy to create with adaptive policy. That sounds ideal. So what about customers who have hybrid solutions, different, different technology solutions? How do we integrate it there? 
so because um, the adaptive policy solution is built on top of Cisco's secure group tagging technology, mm -hmm. it's completely open and extensible meaning that you can work with Cisco Catalyst switches if it's on your campus network. And if you have Meraki in your branch offices, it works really well together and gives you the flexibility to work with other vendors if you need to as well. Um, and the reason why adaptive policy is so important today, it's because of the challenges we see with IT teams. Mm -hmm. For example, when an organization um, you know, gets a new company under its wings or deals with multi-tenancy or user user roles changes. Mm -hmm. um, those are challenges because access policies are difficult to create traditionally. Right, of course. And also what we see is IT teams don't have a way to quarantine threats when they do happen mm -hmm. or have remediation steps to follow. And so this is where adaptive policy is really important because it can adapt to what's going on in the network. Brilliant. So we've yeah. chosen the right name then. I, I hope so. Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay. So yeah. adaptive policies, that's one we've got on the list. So what is the next thing? Well, the next thing to look to is how our users access the network. Mm -hmm. We need to secure our users and give the right access to the right people. And one of the things that we're going to use today is Meraki Trusted Access. This is one way we can securely give access to people if they want to use personal devices. Ah, okay. And traditionally, we've had to do this with by installing an MDM agent. Mm -hmm. But Trusted Access is different because now we can give secure access without needing to download an MDM solution on a personal device. That sounds like a nice step forward. Cause so it's like, bring your own device, but we're really doing it properly now. Yeah. Let's, let's bring it to life with an example. Yes, so one of my favorite examples is talking about traveling doctors. So a traveling doctor in a given normal work week, they can be traveling to and from different hospitals, but they wanna be using their personal devices to access patient sensitive data, for mm -hmm. example. And in order to access that, you have to be secure. And so the experience for the end user is they're going to go to a self-service portal and they're going to download a certificate which authorizes them access to patient data. Okay. And so it makes it really seamless for the end user. But now for the IT admin, onboarding devices is super easy. They don't have to manage certificates because all the certificate management is done with Meraki. Mm. And as you know, in a networking world, certificates are hard to handle, difficult to manage and difficult to create. So we're taking that off the IT team's hands and we're making it seamless for end users and, and IT admins. Okay. So we have already talked about a couple of different areas. Trusted access, I think, sounds like a really nice step forward. Um, we're talking about authenticating users to the network, with their, even with their own devices, not yeah. just with ones that we've already got locked down. So what else have we got today? We got to talk about the users as well. We mustn't forget them, of course. Sure. We, we've spoken about threats on the network. What about threats external to the network? Right. Um, threats from the internet, things like ransomware, phishing attacks callback attacks. All of these are extremely prevalent. And like I said, these keep evolving, but solutions don't. But Cisco has a rich security portfolio. And one of the solutions that they have is Cisco Umbrella, which mm -hmm. is a DNS layer protection service. And if you remember at Meraki, we used to have, I mean, we still have an integration with Cisco Umbrella. Mm -hmm. But today, we're announcing a new automated integration between Cisco Meraki and Cisco Umbrella. So how does that change things in practice? Sure thing. Well, with the previous integration, you know, you'd have to go in, put in the API keys, and have a manual integration between the Umbrella dashboard and the Cisco Meraki dashboard. Mm -hmm. However, with the brand new integration, everything is completely automated. And for the first time, users can see their security events within the Meraki dashboard. So everything is done from a single pane of glass. Got it. So we're going back again, which we're trying to bring it back to that single pane of glass. We don't need the two screens for the two different solutions anymore. Right. That's great. So the step one really was just integrating Umbrella, which is an incredibly powerful tool Cisco has acquired into its business. Uh, and then we are also at, um, managing that successfully through a single screen with this new development. Okay, Abby, I like the sound of that very much. So if I'm a customer, how do I make the right decision about which one to move ahead with? Sure thing, Simon. And like, and like all questions in life, it really depends. Mm. If you're a customer that has a lean IT team and wants a hassle-free turnkey solution to manage your internet threats, then choose the new SKU. Everything is managed from the Meraki dashboard. It's very easy to set up. But if you want to set up rich policies, if you want to do really niche content filtering settings, mm -hmm. then choose the old integration, the manual integration method, which gives you powerful features on the Umbrella dashboard and these of operation through the Meraki dashboard as well. So we really have covered all the bases for different options for our customers. 
That's great. Uh, so we've talked very nicely about how we're protecting users with some of these new innovations. Now so let's think about a little bit about devices and what are we doing that's new for the devices that connect into the network. Well, Simon, I, I saw this at a conference where there was a competition to break into IoT devices, and I think the average time was about four minutes, Ooh. which is really incredible when you think about it. Mm. So your thermostat or a medical IoT device does not support 802.1x. So the way you would authenticate that is using WPA PSK. You'd have a pre-shared key between all of these devices. And the problem there is if the pre-shared key gets compromised, then your IoT network is now compromised. Right, because it's so, shared. <laughs> exactly. So we need a solution that makes this better. And for that, we're introducing Identity PSK. All right, so let's dive into that in a little bit more detail. I get the concept of a pre-shared key for sure. This is where I get a password to get onto my Wi-Fi, for example. But of course, the risk there is that every now and then you're going to see, you're going to walk around and see stuck on somebody's monitor, they've got the actual password because they couldn't remember it. So obviously, that doesn't help us a huge amount on the security mm -hmm. side. We need to get more granular as well. So how are we moving ahead with that? Precisely. With PSK? So Identity PSK essentially takes your device's MAC address, correlates it against a radius server, and then authenticates the device. So now we've eliminated the issue of the pre-shared key. And this really helps IT teams because, I mean, if you have devices that do not, are not compatible with the 802.1x, mm -hmm. then you can now use Identity PSK. And additionally, this also helps improve wireless performance. How you ask? Customers don't have to create multiple SSIDs to manage pre-shared keys for all of their IoT devices. They can now do it using Identity PSK. All right, so that's, that's really going to help to get more specific to each individual user and different use cases and the different devices that we're connecting in as well. I love it. So we're, we're sort of talking a little bit more about devices now, and we obviously connect a lot of devices into our network access points and, and IoT devices and so on. How are we going to ensure that they're actually going to be secure? Yeah, that's a brilliant question, because as you know, networking devices are also vulnerable to threats, like our access points, our switches and firewalls, mm -hmm. right? A rogue access point could be attached at any time, and then now malicious threats are coming our way. So, which is why we're introducing Secure Connect, which is an important feature, and it's really unique to Meraki, because now a Meraki switch port can authenticate and validate an access point that's plugged in, uh -huh. Um, basically saying, oh, this access point is, is actually belonging to the same organization, the same owner. And if it's validated, then it can actually automatically push out configurations directly to the access point. Mm. And this is a really exciting feature, right? This is obviously going to help to ensure that what we plug in is actually allowed to be plugged in before it gets access to the network and potentially do harm. So that, that sounds great. And yeah. I haven't heard of that feature elsewhere. I mean, does anybody else have that? No, it's completely a, a brand new Meraki feature that's you know built in-house with Meraki. And the cool thing is that it really addresses the IT challenges we see today, mm -hmm. which is that not a lot of people have time or resources or even money to um, implement security solutions at every layer. So this is really taking uh, a lot of the pain points away from our customers. And the right. cool thing is that it's available as an added on feature if you are already a Meraki Switch customer. Ah, so you don't even need a brand new switch to do this. Exactly. It's Great. compatible with any switch model 210 and up mm -hmm. and uh, works with any of our Wi-Fi 5 and 6 APs. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a nice step forward. Like it really is. gives us confidence that uh, you're locking things down properly. Yeah. So let's think about um, when we're talking about locking things down, of course, the firewall is the traditional way of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about the perimeter security and that side of things. What have we got that's new on that front? Sure thing. Um, as you know, Simon, on the MX, building firewall rules is pretty simple pretty straightforward, but things can get out of hand pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. We've seen customers where the firewall rules are pages and pages, and one of the reasons why this happens is because when people go in, they see random IP addresses, and they don't want to remove one of these things because, you know, I don't know what this is, mm -hmm. so I might accidentally cause a breach. So they live it and they create new rules. Mm -hmm. But what if you could take your network objects, like your telephone or printer, map them to an IP address or subnet, and then group these objects together, and then apply your firewall rules on them? Well. You can do that on the MX today. We're announcing firewall object groups, which allows you to do just this on all of your MX devices. Fantastic. That sounds like a big step forward in terms of IT efficiency. That's something we're always thinking about, right, with all the features that we develop. So we've covered so many things already on this uh, presentation. What else have we got? Is there anything else? Well, as a final thing we want to say, um, as you know in the news, we hear a lot about um, threats that happen within devices themselves, like being tampered with and uh, non-compliant OSs being installed. And in order to address this for our customers, Meraki is now fully supporting Cisco trustworthy systems, mm. 
which is a really elaborate way of saying that all of our devices support Cisco security solutions to ensure that our devices that we create are complete, completely tamper-proof and there's no way of hacking it in terms of downloading non-compliant OSs, wow. which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've thought about a lot on this uh, presentation, haven't we? We've covered a lot of ground. Maybe we should do a quick recap. There's so much in here. What do we need to uh, to do? Well, let's yeah. go through that again. Let's, let's do that. So uh, first we unveiled the MS390, which is our most powerful switch ever yet. And because of the Sil Cisco Silicon chip that's in here, we're able to build out features like adaptive policy, which allows us to implement access policies throughout the network consistently, mm -hmm. but also making it IP agnostic. And then next, we also talked about Meraki Trusted Access, yep. which allows um, our personal devices to access corporate assets or sensitive data without needing to install an MDM solution. Mm and eliminating the pain of certificate management right, for IT right. admins. And then next, we also introduce uh, Meraki with umbrella integration, but now with an easy way to view all of your umbrella activities under one dashboard. And then we also talked about Identity PSK, where we can group IoT devices and allow them to be verified with their MAC addresses and their RADIUS server, eliminating the need of pre-shared keys, which can be a cause of problems. Sure. Yeah. And Abhi, do you want to? Sure. And then Amelie spoke very eloquently about Secure Connect. And then we briefly touched upon how we've made firewall rules on the MX incredibly simple with firewall object groups. And to tie all of these things together neatly, we introduced Cisco trustworthy systems on all of Meraki devices to prevent tamper proof, to prevent tampering. Nice. There's so much we've got, we've packed into this presentation. Yeah. I'm really impressed that you've managed to remember all this detail. It's yeah. really, really, really great. <laughs> and so obviously for those of you who are listening and, and watching this, then there's a lot of information we've packed in. Uh, please go back and watch the video again. But of course, the other place you can go to is meraki.cisco.com, our website. And you're going to find links there to all of the detail that you need to help you really get to grips with all of these different features and capabilities we've added today. And of course, this shiny new switch that we've introduced as well, the MS390. So so thanks very much indeed for watching. We very much look forward to speaking to you soon.